Hi, I don't want to get killed, so let me make a few things clear. This video is pretty much on how DC is finally competing with Marvel, and I'm more of a Marvel fan currently than a DC fan, but I did grow up as a DC fan. I'm viewing all this with no bias in mind, and I don't want to propagate a fan war or something like that. That being said, these two companies are companies. They create films and games for us to consume, and they have to constantly compete to stay profitable. Like Walmart and Amazon vying for dominance over online shopping, let's not forget that Marvel and DC have to bring their A-game if they want to stay in the hearts and minds of the people. And Marvel has been killing it, baby. The MCU has been a massive, thick success since 2008. Then we got the cartoon dominance, good or not, then we got the Netflix shows, and now we're finally getting video games. Marvel has been the best of the best, and no matter how much DC and Warner Brothers respects them, they're very obviously thinking, how the flippity flap do we catch up to them? That's a real quote, by the way. Someone at Warner Brothers headquarters definitely said that. Also, by the way, this video won't touch comics. I want to talk about what affects Marvel and DC in the mainstream. And sadly, comics aren't really the mainstream. For example, if a movie changes something, the comics will most likely change to accommodate. That's just the power of movies, like it or not. So Warner Brothers execs racked their brains and finally came upon a realization. We don't have to copy Marvel. Let's do our own thing. Someone finally realized that the MCU movies aren't popular because they're a cinematic universe, though that does play a factor. Most people genuinely enjoy MCU movies because they're good. That sparked an idea. Let's take something DC is known for and run with it. The multiverse. And whoever came up with that shit just single-handedly saved Warner Brothers. DC has come up with a brilliant strategy to bring itself back from being known as the edgy, less good Marvel Studios, and that strategy is one I like to call the multiverse strategy. And I think it's working. Guys, probably fought hundreds of thousands of other civilians. The hell are you supposed to be? I'm vengeance. Now, before we begin, I just want to say that Marvel is heating up the competition, especially in the video game sector, and after so many announcements, here's another bombshell. Fortnite. Fortnite Season 4 Nexus War has just been released, baby, and it is sick. Fortnite is the world's most popular battle royale game, right? Well, you know what make it even better? Marvel. Well, more Marvel. Team up with Marvel's greatest heroes and villains like Thor, Iron Man, who probably plays better than the one in Marvel's of She-Hulk, Storm, Doctor Doom, Wolverine, and more. I'm honestly so happy to see X-Men characters in a game. Not only have the Marvel characters landed on the island, but the locations are also Marvel-based as well, including Doom's Domain, Sentinel Graveyard, and more. With superpowers like Doctor Doom's Arcane Gauntlets, Groot's Bramble Shield, and Silver Surfer's Board, Nexus War is an event you do not want to miss. Do you want to know who the characters team up to fight? Oh yeah, baby. Poggers. Yeah, saying that is definitely not going to date this video. So now is the perfect time to jump in. If you haven't downloaded Fortnite already, use the link in the description below to download Fortnite for free. Definitely check it out. I'll be streaming it on Twitch at some point, so I hope to see you gamers there. Thank you, Epic Games, for sponsoring this video. And now, on to the rest of the video. Let me paint you a picture. Justice League has just released, an absolute failure of a movie. And the movie itself is mediocre, but that in of itself is a failure. Because Warner Brothers was expecting an Avengers-level hit on their hands. But no, we got this. Brunch. Like, what is brunch? At this moment in time, Warner Brothers wanted to create a cinematic universe to compete with Marvel. Because stupidly, what they took away from Marvel was... Connecting everything together and adding a ton of Easter eggs makes your movies good. But it doesn't. And so, like I said, a new plan came together. The multiverse strategy, and it all started with Crisis on Infinite Earths. Oh, wrong visual, sorry, not that crisis. This crisis. Hello? <laughs> As random and weird as this was, this confirmed one thing. The multiverse is real. And it doesn't only connect the CW shows, old DC shows, and old movies together, it connects the current DC Extended Universe. This changed everything. The biggest strength DC has always had is the random weird directions the characters could take. It's like Marvel's What If, but expanded dramatically. We got Red Sun, The Dark Knight Returns, Gotham by Gaslight, Earth One. And if you apply this comic idea to the films, then technically all these movies are part of this multiverse that CW's crisis established, right? So technically, whenever there is a standalone movie, like say Joker, even though it's not connected to the DC Extended Universe, it is still part of the DC multiverse. And what does that mean? 
creative freedom, bitch. This means that films can be created with vastly different versions of the same character. And these films can be directed by different directors with different creative visions. Say that five times fast. Directed by different directors with different creative visions. Directed by different directors with different creative visions. Okay, that wasn't that hard. DC's issues have actually helped them. Because since we've seen so many weird interpretations of the characters now, not just in films but in TV as well, we can accept the fact that there will always be different versions of the same character played by different actors. Heck, Flash's film, which is based on Flashpoint, will integrate Michael Keaton's Batman, have Ben Affleck's Batman, and might, just might introduce Flashpoint Batman, who is Thomas Wayne, and that's all all thanks to the multiverse. This film is immensely important because if you look around at the DC universe, obviously we have all of these characters that exist within their own bubbles. By opening that door that Flashpoint did in the comics, all of these stories and characters can start to collide. Being a multiverse, that means that DC can do what it does best. The hell are you supposed to be? When Joker came out in my video, I said that I really like that the movie exists, and I hope DC makes more character-driven films like it, and lo and behold, because of the multiverse, these films can exist without being tied down to the restrictions of being in one cinematic universe. So in the pipeline, while we have future DCEU projects like The Flash and Black Adam, we can also get this absolutely sexy new Batman trilogy, a film series directed by Matt Reeves, which will begin with The Batman airing in 2021. I love the Matt Reeves Apes films, and this looks like everything I've ever wanted Batman to be. I am irrationally excited for this film. And heck, even the DC animated movie universe was killed by The Flash. Though one could argue that Apocalypse War as a film killed the universe because it was so trashy. So because of this, the animated department can focus on standalone films again, like the latest Superman movie, as well as an upcoming long Halloween Batman movie. And let's not forget Zack Snyder's Justice League. I honestly feel like one of the few essayists that's unironically excited for this movie. As debatable as it is whether or not it was the right call to release the film for the fans, the Snyder Cut is coming out, and it already looks better than the theatrical release of the Justice League, which was fucking awful. And I think it's important to note that I just said that WB released this film for the fans. Now we'll see Zack Snyder's vision come to life, and you know, I'm pretty sure WB is doing this partly for the money, but it really does seem like WB is trying to cater to its fanbase. DC fandom is a thing that happened, and it was free. There were panels with the casts of upcoming DC films, we had interviews with directors and such, and it was all amazing. It was like a free Comic Con. I think this approach DC is taking to just start paying attention to the fans and catering to them rather than just focusing on what other companies are doing that's successful is the best approach. DC kept changing shit up to make their movies more like Marvel's and that got them Justice League, when people who wanted to watch Justice League wanted to watch Zack Snyder's Justice League. WB's indecisiveness took David Ayer's movie away from him and we were left with Suicide Squad, which was WB's attempt to recreate Guardians of the Galaxy. Warner Brothers has finally realized that they need to stop fighting their consumers for the most part, give them what they love, pitch them new ideas, and they should focus on the strengths only the DC brand can provide. And that, I believe, is the multiverse strategy. Thanks so much, Sandre Short, or The End, on YouTube for the Interstellar Ranger Commence fan video. This is the coolest thing ever. I love it, man. Thank you. Hey, you made it to the end. Thank you very much. I'm making an anime called Interstellar Ranger Commence. Check it out in the description down below, or there's going to be a card popping up somewhere. And now the Patreon question of the video. Jens Chavez asks, what is your favorite kids movie? And that's a great question. I think I'm going to go with uh, Spider-Verse. I might have answered Lilo and Stitch or Zootopia or How to Train Your Dragon. You know, there's so many great kids movies out there, but to be honest, I don't know, I'm just feeling Spider-Verse at least right now. I just love Spider-Man a lot and I feel like that story was really impactful. It, it, you felt empowered by that movie and I thought that was really amazing. So I'm gonna have to go with Spider-Verse. Thank you so much for the question, King. Thank you so much, patrons. Remember to ask me questions and uh, you guys are just amazing. Honestly, even if you don't <laughs> ask me questions, you don't really have to. Just you supporting me is obviously more than enough. You don't have to indulge me with these questions. So thank you so much, seriously. It means a lot. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you come back to the table.